All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTube. This is Rosh, and this is a video series I'm putting together called Axe Effects 3 Basics. So I want to thank each and every one of you guys for liking, subscribing, sharing, all that, and leaving good comments. Um, so if you have any topics you'd like me to cover, by all means, feel free to leave a comment. Um, so a little about me, I'm an LA-based guitar player uh, and guitar tech. Some of my clients include Def Leppard, Steve Vai, Dweezil Zappa, Melissa Etheridge, and others. So I had a comment um, asking about a tutorial on how to do some of the synth stuff and maybe some ambient synth drone kind of stuff. So first off, um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. So, and you know, it's not gonna, um, there's just so many. But I'm gonna show one method that I do like to use um, for ambient synth stuff and um, can be effective. So uh, here it goes. So we're gonna start with an empty preset. Um, and this is a quick build. We're gonna do in one, out one. And we're gonna use the synth block right here. And connect the shunts. Okay, so let's talk about the synth and then let's, uh, let's see, let's reset this block. Okay, so uh, in each synth you get three voices that you can use. And um, the type of synth, each of these synths um, is gonna be a different sound, right? So what you can do is, of course, you can just try different ones. Okay, so there's that, there's this one, and there's the sawtooth, and sine, square, and triangle, and of course, white noise. Okay. Cool. So in this, uh, the one, one of the ones that I like to use is the sawtooth. Now, one of the things is this track block right here. Um, it's gonna, there's different ways that it'll track the pitch or what kind of sound it is. One thing that you definitely want to be careful of is the off position, because if you just put it in the off position, that means the synth block is going to run by itself like this. So yeah, definitely avoid that unless you want an ambient drone to happen, which we will actually cover a little bit later in this video. So what I'm going to do is, um, I'm actually going to do all three voices as the sawtooth. And then um, for right now, we're going to just make sure that this pitch is going to pitch an envelope is going to be right there. Okay. So uh, down below is the frequency, the shift, and all these different parameters. Um, well, the thing that you want to be wary, uh, aware of is the frequency, because this is actually going to be the pitch that the synth is making unless it's reading the pitch from your uh, guitar. So for example, if I play a scale, because it's getting the tracking from here. Now, if I leave this in the off position, I'll just bring this volume down. If I leave this in the off position, right? So what's happening is that this free, it's gonna be playing this frequency and you can adjust this frequency to have the, and uh, the synth play whatever frequency you want. I would recommend just Googling a table of um, what each pitch uh, or what frequency each pitch corresponds to. So for example, the note E is corresponds to 82 hertz. And so what I'm gonna do for right now, I'm just gonna do 82 hertz. So what's gonna happen is if I am playing the note E, if I leave this in the off position, it's gonna play that. So you guys can hear that. Um, so for now, uh, before we get to the ambient like droning thing that's gonna happen, let's just build one that would actually correspond to the pitch of your guitar. The next thing I usually add is a compressor and then um, we're gonna add a studio compressor and uh, you know, something like. Yeah, that's probably pretty good right there. You can mess with these thresholds. All you're doing is using the compressor so that when the compressor is off and you pick harder, the synth isn't going to react in a weird way. So you're just trying to get um, it to smooth out the attack. So if I pick really hard, it's going to be loud. If I pick really lightly, it's going to be soft. You're using the compressor to kind of smooth all that out. So I'll turn the compressor on. And one thing to keep in mind is that the compressor or the synth is definitely not polyphonic. So if you play a chord, right now I'm playing an A, open A chord. 
you notice it's only playing one pitch. So you want to just be kind of wary of that. Um, and the next thing that we're going to do is that um, in the second voice, we're going to just shift this up or down an octave. I'm sorry. Okay. And then the third voice, I like to shift it up an octave. So these are the semitones. So you have one that's uh, the root E, one that's a sem uh, an octave lower and an octave higher. So um, now you get kind of a little bit of a thicker synth. And so now what we can do is we can kind of mess with the tuning. Actually, why don't we, yeah. So in the center pitch right here, so we have one that's an octave down and one that's an octave higher. We're gonna mess with this tuning right here. And I haven't talked about this in any one of my videos, but uh, basically this tuning is that one of the voices will be slightly out of tune. And we're gonna tie that to an LFO. So um, we're gonna tie this to LFO 1A. And basically an LFO is just like this, uh, it's called a low frequency oscillator, but basically it's this, um, it's a way to like automatically have something assigned that's gonna you know cycle endlessly. And in the controllers menu right here, you can adjust uh, LFO one and what the speed of that LFO is gonna be, what the depth is, all these different things. So we're gonna just slow this way down. And if you go back here, you're gonna see that this tuning little ball right here that's gonna drop the tuning of this center pitch and the synth is slowing way down. Let's slow that down even more. So go to the controllers, I'm gonna move that down because we just want this kind of thing happening. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we want the minimum and maximum to not be that wide, maybe 10 cents on both sides. So something like that. And you can kind of mess with these. I'm just doing this kind of like the really quick way, but you can hear that. There's this like cool oscillation in the center, right? Um, so again, these uh, the higher octave and the lower octave are remaining in tune, and it's like that center voice is just slowly oscillating. And of course, if you need something wider, you can adjust the min and max value. If you need it to swirl faster, you can go in the controllers menu and adjust the rate. You can always tie these to an expression controller as well. Um, so I don't know why it froze. Okay, so, huh, it's weird. I think my mouse ran out of batteries. All right, let's try that. Okay, cool. So now the next step is, of course, um, so you have a synth, you have the compressor that's gonna smooth this out. Uh, I'll probably bring this up a little bit lower and then let's smooth the ratio out a little bit. The other thing is the compressor will help the sustain of the synth. And uh, just make sure you meter it. So we can probably bring the volume of the synth up a little bit. We'll just put that at unity. Awesome, okay. Now the next step that I usually do is I add a reverb and then I'll usually run this in parallel. So you get the main synth and the reverb and we'll use one of these cloud reverbs. Uh, Nimbus Stratus is probably pretty good. And let's do this. And then remember when you're running stuff in parallel, you want the mix to be 100% wet and the input gain to be 100% and you're using the level knob to adjust how much of the reverb you want. Pretty cool. And again, you can adjust these, of course, to how much sustain you want, but that's kind of like a cool little ambient thing. Maybe any negative five. Sounds pretty mean, it sustains forever. And the last bit, and one of the things to get rid of uh, for the synth is that uh, you wanna use a filter uh, block to adjust how much of that, like, I don't really even know what it would be called, but that little warble at the top where you can just hear the attack of the synth. What you wanna do is use the low pass filter. 
and this frequency right here is going to allow you to shave off that top end of the synth. So for example, if I have this at fully, there's no, no, or uh, sorry, what the low pass does is basically anything underneath this frequency is going to be let through and anything above this frequency is going to taper off and then eventually it's going to be at zero. So for example, anything above 10K ish here is going to be cut off from the signal. This allows you to fine tune the top end of the synth. So what you can do is you can play a note. And then you can use the frequency knob to shave off how much you want. So let's make sure we get a little bit less. See, that's a little bit more ambient. And of course, you have the option of either putting it before or after the reverb, so they do sound different. So for example, here's after the reverb. to use this frequency knob to adjust how much of the reverb you want. You're more than um, welcome to tie it to an expression pedal um, so that you can adjust it with your foot or even adjusting it with like another LFO. So we'll use LFO 1B. And what that's going to happen is, what's going to happen is that the, you can see this, it's going to open up the filter a little bit and you can set the low and maximum value. So for example, it'll just slowly open up like that. So let's say it'll open up all the way and it'll start down here so you can hear that it just kind of follows that knob a little bit all right now for the fun part so let's save this and what we're going to do is this synth block right here i'm going to save it um, i'm going to copy this channel to channel b and I'm going to copy this channel to channel C. And so what's going to happen is in scene one, we're going to make this the note E. So E. In scene two, we're going to make this the note uh, C. And in scene three, we're going to make this the note A. And so what you want to do, what I mentioned at the beginning of uh, this video, is that we're going to take the actual number of the frequencies and we're going to adjust them here in the frequency spectrum. And then we're going to turn actually the track to off so it just goes between each synth. So for example, in B, we're going to, uh, sorry, let's go to scene two. So we're going to save this. Let's go to scene two. And this is going to be the note C that we want in there. So we're going to leave that to channel two. And then if you actually take a look at a table of frequencies, the note C corresponds to 130 hertz so we're going to adjust this number to 130 and then we'll save that and then in scene three or I'm sorry so that's scene two with channel b for the synth and when we go to scene three we're going to go to channel c for the synth and we're going to change this to the note a and uh, the note a corresponds to 110 hertz and we're going to do that in every voice All right, so just so I can talk over this, I'm gonna just bring the level of this out one down so that it's not gonna just blow out our ears. So what's gonna happen is this. So in scene one, it's gonna play the synth and it's gonna be 82 hertz, which is corresponding to the note E. In scene two, it's gonna play um, the, the synth at 130 hertz, which corresponds to the note C. And then at, in scene three, it's gonna play at 110 hertz, which corresponds to the note A. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to actually turn, I'm going to um, bypass the synth in all three scenes so we don't just have this droning note right here. And then I'm going to adjust the track right here to off in all three voices. So there's the E scene. And then now we're in channel B. We're going to adjust this to off. And then in scene three, 
Again, it's going to be on channel C. We're going to turn these off. All right, so here's what's going to happen. So we're going to go back to scene one. I'm going to turn this on. It's going to ring out forever. So as you can hear, the synth is just going to oscillate forever. Now in scene two, um, we're going to turn this synth on. And we want to make sure that the LFO in this scene is also super slow. Save that. And then in scene three, we're going to turn that on. All right, so cool thing is, so now every time you switch a scene, it's going to be a different note. So we have the note E right now, to the note C, to the note A. And then back to this. So one thing you can do is, of course, you can, um, you don't even need the input to be connected. So what we can do is actually, if you want to like solo over the top of this, you can, uh, we'll do a cab, go to the input, and then we're going to connect all this to out one at the very end. And then now you have something to solo over. Let's make sure I can actually use, uh, when we do Captain Hook, 3A, and then the cabinet is probably pig, so we'll do, I don't know, uh, we'll just do something like this. Um, probably not the be best tone, but now I'm going to engage this. Uh, let's bring down, put a volume block before this so I can actually bring the volume up of out one. Let's say... Insert. I'll just bring this way down so I can actually hear the guitar. So we'll do this at zero. And we'll bring that way down. So right here, this volume block is just adjusting how much of the synth I want. Now scene two, it's gonna go to the note C. Now we're gonna go to A. So hopefully that makes sense. It's a good way to just kind of get these ambient synth drones and then feel free to solo over them. Obviously in each scene, this kept switching uh, to a different thing. So I'll reconnect it one more time. And so right here, this volume block again is adjusting the output of the synth. And then I have these scenes to just solo over. <laughs> Pretty cool way to get kind of ambient synth drones. You hear that swirling. You can, of course, adjust uh, the volume if you need, if you want to adjust it to an expression controller. So you get all this. So anyways, that's some fun with synths. There's obviously a zillion more ways to do it, but uh, that's one little approach to do some ambient synth stuff. Uh, other than that, it's going to end this video for right now. If you have any questions, by all means, leave a comment below and uh, 
Hope to hear from you guys soon. Thanks and take care. Oh, are you leaving?